So we're going to talk about microprofile, and these ones I, I borrowed from the official microprofile presentation, but I'm not going to present everything to be, because honestly, uh, most of the content is about specs and something, and I want to show you code. So I presented these ones before. So I need also if you go to developers.redhead.com, we have a lot of different uh, books that uh, uh, we made available. So microservice for Java developers, we're about to release a new version of this bo book. If you want to learn more about Reactive and Vertex, Clement uh, uh, wrote this book. Uh, this is my book. Also, we, we released this, this book last year. We're about to release a new version of this book too because Istio changed it a lot in the past year. So introducing Istio Service Mesh for Microservices is another great book which is available on this link, Istio, uh, bit.ly istio-book. But uh, let's talk about MicroProfile because most of you are used to Java E and you know when Oracle bought Sun and then we have this uh, Sun didn't have the money to keep investing on Java E then Oracle took a lot of time to be able to keep, uh, uh, keep the pace of changes inside Java E. And after that, for some years, Oracle even decided to not fund more uh, Java E initiatives. So the community got worried because we made a lot of investment in Java E. And then suddenly the owner of the trademark, Java Enterprise Edition, wasn't investing anymore on the technology. So, and that's the good thing about having an open standards. Other vendors and other communities, for example, So Java from Brazil and the London Java community uh, in the UK, they decided to join forces and create something different. And of course, it couldn't be on the JCP, which is an Oracle sponsored and Oracle controlled initiative. So they went to the Eclipse Foundation and founded MicroProfile. So if you're thinking about Jakarta E, uh, in fact, Jakarta E. Uh, Oracle donated the Java E specifications to Jakarta E on the Eclipse Foundation because of the MicroProfile initiative. So if you think, oh, creating a standard is an easy thing, no, it's a very hard political process. You need to define, it's like creating a constitution for a country. You need to define how people are voting on the issues, how are the expert groups formed, how that is the voting process, who has the right to deny something. Uh, if you, somebody denies, who has the, the power to revoke what is decided? And all of these things need to be written before anything is created inside the foundation. Because uh, after you create something and then people start fighting over that and you don't have a previous document stating what happens in each one of these cases, then you just have a huge mess and nothing goes forward. That's why the micro profile. We didn't have any progress in the, micro, in the Eclipse Foundation around MicroProfile in the first year, for example. We were just defining the things. And now with Jakarta E, things were f is, uh, are much faster right now because we already, we already had the basis of MicroProfile. So they're not competing in standards. In fact, most of the Jakarta E um, uh, initiative came from the MicroProfile initiative. And it's a very nice thing that for now, um, the projects from Java E are now with Jakarta E. And even the TCKs, which is something that the Java community has been fighting for like more than 10 years, now the Java E TCKs are open source and available on the Jakarta E website. And now you're able to see how badly written were the, the TCKs, because most of them are just have some make file scripts, some end scripts, and, and, and we know people that work inside of Oracle and they really wanted to modernize the TCKs, but the Oracle senior management never allowed them to do so. And now it's, it's very nice that because now that they're open source, we are able to modify and make them better. So that, that's the current state of Jakarta E and, and MicroProfile. Okay. So it already started uh, some years ago. I was there, so it was three years ago approximately two and a half I guess so in San Francisco uh, May 2015 15 May 2015 we launched the micro profile initiative and these companies most of them were were there with uh, Payada, Fujitsu, Tomitra, IBM, Red Hat, 
uh, I don't know that logo. And uh, along with the Java community, so Java, for example, and others uh, were added later. These is, are the current companies and communities that participate in the MicroProfile initiative. And thanks to that, we have many different implementations. These are the current implementations. Uh, of course, I have to say that my favorite is Stormtail. Uh, if you remember Wildfly Swarm, uh, Wildfly Swarm was renamed to Thorntail because Wildfly Swarm it started as the micro version of Wildfly. But the code base changed so much that Wildfly Swarm didn't have anything to do with Wildfly anymore. So they decided, well, let's rename the project because they are completely separate right now. The code bases are, are completely different. And now Thorntail, the new version of Thorntail, in fact, is a, is a, a completely rewrite of the code base. So they are very different from now. And <coughs> And what else? And maybe the latest addition to the portfolio is Helidon, which is from Oracle. So now even Oracle is providing a microprofile implementation, which is a completely new project, completely different from the web logic implementation, for instance. And you see, microprofile was launched in May 2015, and it took them more than one year to be able to release the first specification, which had nothing new. They just took like the free specifications that they already had in Java E and said, well, MicroProfile 1.0 is this. If you have CDI 1.2, JSONP 1.0, and JAXRS 2.0, you have a MicroProfile 1.0 implementation, which is which they released this just to have something to build on top of that. So all of the Java E providers would be able to create a MicroProfile implementation. And it took, after this release, it took them almost a year to release version 1.1 with the first new specification. So, MicroProfile config was the very first specification that was created inside the MicroProfile umbrella. But the other ones didn't change. Because? Because they kept, they spent like almost two years writing the documents for the organization. And now that we have config, which I show with coding, so let's keep that. Let's skip, and I hate these animations. Uh, oh, come on. So, 1.0, now 1.2. With MicroProfile in 1.2, well, thanks. Uh, MicroProfile was created from the ground to be able to be a cloud native platform. So, they added a health check API, metrics API. Fault Tolerance API, JWT, Propagation for Security, API 2. They were all released in September 2017. And you can see that starting from version 1.1, 1.2, now the cadence of release is much faster. In fact, the goal of the MicroProfile working group is to have a new release every three months. If you think about from the Java e perspective, which were when we had one new release every two or three years at best, now we have one release every three months. So with Health Check, you're able to out of box just get your micro profile implementation and run on top of Kubernetes, which became the de facto standard and have all the health checks already implemented. So I'm going to show with code too. So now if you want your, uh, because Health Check is a, either my application is up or is down. Is ready for requests or not. With metrics, you can provide numbers. So the, the, these numbers can be, uh, by default, uh, the metrics API provides you with uh, uh, Prometheus uh, supported uh, log formats. So you can get the output of the metrics uh, API and output directly to Prometheus and start monitoring the metrics of our application. And these metrics, you have some basic metrics provided by the vendors, for example, number of threads, number of uh, memory, this kind of metrics. But metrics is mostly useful when you provide your implementations. For example, number of users currently logged in, or number of um, items being sale at the le in the last 15 minutes. So these metrics you can implement by yourself and pr provide this to Prometheus by default. Or you can also use uh, that, uh, you can also, with a single parameter, you can switch from Prometheus to JSON or YAML. Okay. So, uh, 
these are some of the syndromes. As I said, these are the official slides, so it has a lot of text. These are some of the types of metrics that you can, uh, you, you can use. Uh, count it every time you, for example, invoke a method, you can count and the platform will count by, for you. Gauge, you count by yourself, you just provide a number. So you have a lot of different metrics that you can use and provide. You need, you, I suggest you to, to implement, uh, to use, to read the docs and, and implement by yourself. Fault tolerance was nice because suddenly Netflix created uh, Hystrix and released Hystrix in 2014. And Hystrix became the, the default uh, way of implementing fault tolerance in the Java space after these, uh, these years. But Hystrix is an implementation. So in MicroProfile, we provided an API, which is a, just that, just an API. So you can change the implementation uh, underneath. So we fought tolerance 1.0. We got the most important things from Hystrix, which was defining a timeout, a retry, fallback, a bulkhead, and a circuit breaker. And we added beautiful annotations for doing that with your code. So if you ever coded Hystrix, uh, by yourself, you know, it was very hard. Uh, Spring Cloud, uh, Hystrix added some nice features on top of Hystrix, making it easier. And I think that the, the syntax for the microprofile uh, thing is even better. And now that we have an API, you know that Hystrix entered maintenance mode from Netflix, so Netflix is not actively uh, contributing anymore and is looking for other, p other companies to be able to keep the project or let it die which is a good thing because, uh, for example, in Thorntail, the current implementation uses um, Hystrix. But we are even considering changing from Hystrix to a newer version of a fault tolerance library called Resilience4j, which it seems to be uh, actively maintained and might be a better future than just keeping using Hystrix. So how does it work, fault tolerance? So if you want to add a circuit breaker, all of this, well, all of the, most of these parameters are optional. So if you want a circuit breaker with the default configuration, you just add at circuit breaker. And if you want to provide the fallback, at fallback, and you just provide the fallback method, which I'm going to show you with code to. But I think I had talked enough before showing more, fe more features. We can see how can we implement using microprofile. And if you think that microprofile for now is just a uh, Spring Boot minus minus version. You might have the good, the, the right impression, but uh, in very few moments in time, I, I've been so excited about things that are about to come. And as we were discussing here privately, something very big is about to happen in the Java space, and that's everything I can tell you about right now. Because some companies might be working on something big that might be about to be released in the next couple of months, but I might be lying. So you can't <laughs> trust me, okay? But I'm very excited about this because, uh, and, and maybe you will be excited when and if this thing happens, uh, because there are very few moments uh, in, in our lifetime where we're able to be part of something big I think the cloud was something, I don't know how many of you were, were, were playing with this stuff. The, the cloud was something big when it was created uh, in 2006. I was one of the beta testers of, of what, at that time, what would become Amazon Web Services. And it was very nice to be part of that. So when Spring was created, uh, when was that, 2005? Yeah, and we were able to, to play with the very first big, so you, you see you to be part of these things. And the, maybe the next wave of technology is about to happen very soon. So I, I, I have to tell you that we are living very exciting times. We have very, very, we have very exciting things coming. Okay, but that's everything that I can tell you for now. Okay. And, and uh, maybe no, definitely you have to wait some more uh, months, okay? Just trust me, or not. Yeah. And uh, here, uh, when I went to the thorntail.io website. Let's go back a bit. And which I said is my favorite microprofile implementation, I don't know why. And 
And if I go here to the generator, I'll be able to bootstrap a very simple uh, Torrentio application. So let's see. And if you want to view all of the available dependencies, you can see there are a lot of that. But if I want to add just the umbrella specification microprofile, it will give me all the APIs that I'm looking for to demo to you today. So I added microprofile. I ask it to generate the project. I just unzip it, and it's available as demo three. You can see that I've been playing a lot with this, and I'll just close my older projects, which I was playing. So let's try to do some coding. So if we go demo three, for this one, I'm used to going to use Visual Studio Code with the Java extension. Uh, Visual Studio Code is provided by Microsoft, but the uh, the Java extension is provided by Red Hat using the uh, the language server protocol. So here I just created my endpoint, my REST application. The way it is, I should be able to just get. Let me change my shell here. So if I just do clean thorn tail column run should be able to bootstrap my application very quickly. And when I say quickly, it always takes longer when we're looking at it. Okay, so it's ready. So, oops. Localhost 8080. And if I go to hello, should be providing hello from Thorntail. So this is the most basic thing that I could do. So let's try to increment my application. So if I go here to my hello world endpoints, can you see it? I hope so. And let's see, I want to use the config API. So what can I do to do that? Well, if I want to provide a private string, hello string, and I want this information to be provided on runtime for my application. I could just use inject and state that, well, it's a config property from the microprofile. So, and the name of the property is hello. Okay, and maybe I could have a default value saying bonjour. So instead of saying hello from Thorntail, I could be saying, well, I don't know, just, just bring the string, I'll make it simpler. Uh, hello string. So if I do this and if I don't provide any value, it should be printing bonjour to me. So. Let's see. Just ask it to run again. I'm thinking about the, some of the problems now that we have this word of scale up, scale down using Kubernetes and we have serverless. Some people are complaining about Java because Java is optimized for long running applications. So if you let the Java VM get, uh, if you allow the JVM to get warm, Java will be the fastest environment you have to run your application in production. The problem is that in modern applications that we have today, Java doesn't have enough time to warm up. So comparatively, it's slower than other alternatives. And maybe that's something that is about to change too. So, and uh, you see, uh, bonjour, because I didn't provide anything. So, but what if I wanted to provide a property? I can provide that with uh, environment variable, with a Java property. But what if I want to provide that as um, a file, a property file? So, if I go here, source name, if I create the resources, So if I'm here in this folder, if I do micro profile config dot properties, and I say that hello should be hola, which is in Portuguese, okay? Spanish too. We just have a different accent for saying the things. Now that I provided, I should be pr printing hola instead of bonjour.
voila, you see, that's how you provide implementation. And if I didn't provide here, the microprofiling um, specification even allows you that if I don't provide a default value, I could be, it doesn't need to be necessarily a string. You could be using a Java 8 optional. And it will inject the property for you. Okay? So don't provide a default value. It's a best, it's a good practice to provide it as an optional. So if you do that, uh, the Java U2 optional, I could say hello string or else bonjour. You see? So you can, prov you can either provide a default value here on the annotation or you can use Java code to provide the, 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 the implementation. It's really up to you as a developer to do that. So this is how you use the config API. If I wanted to implement the health check API, I just needed to create a new class. Let's say my health check not Java class. If I want, it needs to implement health check and I need to application scope health I'll call. so what I'm going to do I need to provide a response I uh, probably I, I hear could be uh, issuing a query against the database and see it replies in me for me it's in like 50 milliseconds if it's fast enough or else I would say that it's down but since here it's a very simple code, I'll just say that everything is okay. But if it wasn't okay, I would just change the, the, the answer. I could say, well, let's see, I want to name it uh, Paris. It's up. So Paris is okay. And I could have provided many different implementations because if I wanted something different, uh, name it, I could have another one, for example, there is name and say let's keep it simple one. So I've got the health endpoint and while it's going up. Okay, it's running. Uh, so we have some default endpoints for metrics. If I go to here to metrics, these are the endpoints that are provided by default on Thorntail. You could be providing your own uh, metrics too. But if I want to provide the health checks, I can ju just go here to slash health. If I go to health, you can see that the result is that my endpoint is up. It's running properly. And the checks that have implemented it are that, well, the Paris check is up to, okay? But if I implemented the opposite, down, I wouldn't have a 200 okay uh, reply. I would have another kind of reply, probably in the 500 number. And the checks, one of them would be down. And the nice thing is that you can have many different classes implementing health checks. If any of them is not up, uh, the state of the application, of course, is not up. And if you're running that on... Uh, on a Kubernetes cluster, that instance will, was, will be considered down. And Kubernetes probably will, will restart that instance for you. Okay? So this is a, the kind of thing that you can implement. What else can we... Uh, fault tolerance. I'm going to show you fault tolerance when I provide you the REST client implementation. So we also have JWT. Let's try to skip. So in January 2018, what we have added. So we have this, these were already implemented. So we added metrics 1.1, config 1.1, and we add these new APIs, open tracing. Uh, so if you want to trace your application in, um, inside the Kubernetes cluster, you want to know, because in the past, if you want to have a monolith, and you need to debug what was happening. You just opened the log file and, and saw what was happening. Now you have a distributed application. 
and you have multiple requests spanning uh, multiple endpoints and you need to correlate oh this log is from this transaction and is going through these endpoints so you need to correlate all of this you need some kind of tracing so in the past we use Zipkin for that but now we have a standard which is based on Jaeger which was donated by Uber which is also compatible with Zipkin and it is implemented in open tracing and it's enabled by default in MicroProfile. So if you uh, ever use it Swagger to document your APIs, Swagger was the basis for the open API specification, which is already implemented also in MicroProfile. And now we have a type safe REST client so you can invoke the remote endpoints um, using type safe Java code. And that's the, the thing that I want to show you right now. So let's try to do it before we do that I need another endpoint so we're going to do a rest client consuming from another rest endpoint so let's try to generate another project do I have the micro profile here micro profile implementation generate project so here if I open this one it's going to be demo 4 if I go here to my console, Oops. demo four. Okay, I'm going to open another. Uh, Sam and hello world endpoints. So let's try to create an API that could be a uh, use it in my other endpoints. So what do I want to do? I want to create a person. new file person.java uh, private string name that's private int h so let's create this I need uh, get get uh, get name let's try to do Oh. Okay, should be enough. I need to provide also a uh, private. Uh, default constructor should be good and if I want to go to my endpoint I'll say that instead of just having hello I'll say that I'll add the path hello here and I'll create another endpoint saying that path will be slash people here we are get it will produce application slash JSON and public list person people return list of oh I'm uh, still using Java 8 here So, okay. If I use person off Yanaga, I just turned 40. And who else? My boss. It's 50. So I'm returning two people, and it should be okay. Let's see if it runs. Clean. On on they run. It will fail because the other one's running. 
But if you want to have like, uh, it provides some ports by default, the HD ports, the JMX ports, so you, you're, you should expect some conflicts. But I'll show you how you can avoid this kind of thing. So if you go back here, Thorntail, 8080, health. If I go here to hello, it's okay. If I go here to people, it's providing. So this is one of the uh, JAXRS implementation. It's just providing me a default endpoint where I have some JSON being returned. But if I don't want a port conflict, I can run like Uh, D swarm port offsets. So it will should run <laughs> with all the ports plus one. So here it should be 8081 if I type it the property correctly, of course. And you might be wondering why the project's name is Thorntail and the property is swarm. Is that engineers, well, you just have to complain with them. Yes, it's, uh, the port is working now on 8081, and I have this beautiful endpoint. And how does the REST client API works? So let's go to our another microservice. And now I need to provide the REST client implementation, which is type safe. What are we going to do is first we need to create a new interface saying that a new file, which will be a remote service .java. And it's uh, an interface. So I'll say that. And I can copy the exactly same uh, annotations that I have in the other endpoint. So I just need to add the path. Saying the path root. And I can get. Do get, and I'll get. I'm copy pasting because I'm lazy, but you should you know that copy pasting is a bad thing, right? And okay, adjust import path. Get produces. And here I'll put a string because I know it's a string. And I'll say hello. And list. Java auto person and what else person I need to create this this class so let's create this new file so not Java and here we can copy paste too you know you shouldn't but So I have remote service, have a get, right, produces, person, I have person here too, and I think it's fine. So what can we do? I can call the remote endpoint. So if I go here to my hello world endpoint, so uh, let's see, I want to do a get, my path is going to be Remote, just because I want to try a remote. Am I in the right one? Yes. Uh, I hope you're following me because I'm always getting lost. So this is the remote endpoint. Get path remote. This one will produce uh, application.json2 public list person remote and how can we create a remote client to my remote NPI so remote no remote let me get the name of the class because of course I forgot uh, remote Here, REST Client Builder. REST Client Builder. New Builder. Uh, 
base URL URL. So I'm going to HTTP localhost 881. Is your L builds here? Yeah. Why is it not autocomplete for me? Build and want remote service dot class. New URL. So nice when you're typing and everybody's expecting you to fail. And this one throws exception. Let's client view this. So here I have remote service, remote. So here I'm creating a new builder. I think it's easier to see this way. And what do I need to do? Return remote service dot people. Right? So what is happening right now? This method is creating a new REST client, and I'm invoking these as if it were a local method, but it's going through the network and consuming the REST endpoints. So if I did everything right, I can run it. I imported the wrong one. Uh, that's why produces is not. That's the problem when you have two classes with the same name. Yeah. So if it's working properly. Ready? So if we go here, now it's running on port 8080. So let's create a new tab. 8080 slash remote, right? Ooh. I'm handled exception. I know what's the problem. I should have done that so you wouldn't be able to spot that there is a bug. But if you use the Thorntail run plugin, the REST client view that doesn't work. I complained already. Okay, but it says I didn't provide a fix. But if you do that through the the jar, it should be working. So let's try to do it again. Uh, localhost 8080 slash remote. You see? Not lying. But usually I hide this part, okay? okay? So now it's working, but what happens if I get the other microservice, uh, people, which is running on port 8081, okay? What happens if I stop this one? So if I go to this terminal and stop the service, so this one is not working, and if I try to get this one that is using the REST client endpoints, it will fail because the other point is not available. It's throwing an exception to me. That's how we can implement a very nice circuit breaking strategy. So if I go just go here, so hello word endpoint, yes. So here, this method is failing because uh, it doesn't have a circuit breaker nor a fallback. So if I just add the annotation circuit breaker, and I say that, well, fallback. And the fallback method is like cached. So if I just do this, I don't know why it's complaining, and provide a public list person. Cache and I return 
as list person of, I'll just provide myself. So if anything happens, I'll get the cached version. So if any of exception, uh, exception happens here, the fallback is to go to this method, which needs to be have the same uh, return type. I'll get the cached result here, and I'll be returning just one name instead of two. So now I have to package. run and if I try it returns just Yanaga and if I put the service the other service back to run Okay, should be providing two names. So it works, okay? The fault tolerance, that's very easy for you to code. It show you, so that's what I wanted to show with code. So just to wrap up the presentation, REST client open tracing. Uh, so yeah, I could be showing this is the, the Zipkin console, but now we have an even better one. So in June 2018, we just provided some updated APIs with Microprofile 2.0, which was uh, uh, released in June 2018, we added JSON B because before that we only had JSON P. And with the Microprofile 2.0 release, we want just wanted to align all of the Java E8 APIs with the Microprofile APIs that we had. And what's what are the things that we're working? We released in October Microprofile 2.1 just with the update of Open Tracing 1.2 because this thing in Kubernetes is evolving very fast, so that's the things that are being expected. With Microprofile 2.1, Java E and Jakarta E, these are the updated specs that came from Java E and Jakarta E. These other APIs are new ones, so these are the contributions of the, of the Microprofile specification to, the, to this new Java, cloud native Java words. And this is the roadmap for Microprofile 2.2, which is expected to be released next month. You can see that the, the, the greatest addition to this portfolio is the reactive specification. So we're going to add not only reactive operators it's for you to be able to create your reactive REST endpoints, but we are going to add reactive messaging so you'll be able to consume your JMS queues and your Kafka queues using the reactive messaging uh, framework that is available on Microprofile. Okay? And it's going to beautifully integrate with RxJava so you could be using the observables um, um, uh, implementations from RxJava if you want to using reactive or you can use completable future for, for Java A2. It's up to you to choose. Uh, this is a work in progress from the specification, but as I said, it's, it's, uh, it's about to be released if everything goes well next month. So what are people working on right now on inside Microprofile? These are the things that uh, we expected to be doing uh, during this year. So some thing, people think, oh, uh, we have Microprofiles, we don't have distributed or we don't want distributed transactions. How are we going to handle like long-running transactions or lo long-running actions? And the answer is usually using sagas. So if you want to use sagas, um, microprofile, there's a group inside uh, the microprofile uh, uh, that is working on long-running actions. It's pro uh, and I don't know which type of support will be added on microprofile. But if, uh, for example, Apache Camel already provides you today with uh, Saga support. We're going to work on the Yakult streams, reactive events, data access to have something similar like Spring, spring Data. Uh, so we're going to add data access. Uh, event Data too, to provide uh, with other kinds of buses. Service meshes to integrate even more beautifully with Istio. And Concurrency. Uh, right now we only have the Java. 
uh, E8 concurrency utilities. You might be adding some, something more in micro profile. And that's what I had to show you today. And if you have any questions, I'm available. Uh, but thank you very much for now.